Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. And today, what I want to talk about is whether the Giants can really succeed if Saquon Barkley either gets hurt, he's not the same, or anything like that. I don't think we're getting rid of him. I'm just saying, like, can Daniel Jones succeed? Can the Giants win nine to ten games without Saquon Barkley? Now, whether Daniel Jones succeeds and whether uh, we win nine ten games, I think they're two different things. Like Daniel Jones succeeding is you know, 30 touchdowns, 4,000 passing yards, that sort of stuff. But the team success, we've seen games where Daniel Jones really had a pass. And uh, we could succeed because we had to rely on a run game. Uh, now, just going back to the Florida Gators, Kadarius Toney was an elite weapon on that offense. We didn't have running backs. We didn't have a great offensive line. We just gave him the ball in space, and we were able to make some plays like that. We didn't have a great offensive line. You know, Brett Hagee, we got him undrafted. Stone Forsyth went in the sixth round. And none of the other guys are going to get drafted. I can tell you that much. Uh, maybe if they develop, but, like, no. <laughs> like, oh, the, the Florida Gators had a lot of offensive weapons. Now, college is different to the NFL. Uh, my, uh, Dan Mullen was an offensive genius. I don't think Jason Garrett's an offensive genius. But we have a lot of offensive weapons now, whether it's Galladay, who kind of resembles a little bit of a Pitts. Uh, you know, you have Kadarius Tony who represents Kadarius Tony, and you have a bunch of other wide receivers like you know Trayvon Grimes. Uh, you could say he's more of a, a Sterling Shepard or a Darius Slayton, whatever you want to compare it to. And this offense was one of the best in the league, and you had a ball distributor that was able to do things, and we didn't have to run rely on the run game. Now, the NFL, I think you have to rely on the run game. If we take a look at it, I believe it's like six out of our top eight games in rushing yards resulted in a win. So, uh, rushing is important, like, as far as run yards per game. Now, it's a little bit like you're winning, so you run more. It's a little bit more of that. But if you're able to run the ball, you're able to, you know, uh, r- r- you know run the clock. You're able to do a bunch of things. You're able to control the pace of the game. Uh, you're, you're able to, like, just, you've seen the Alabama. It's just like, they, they're able to run on third and five and get a first down. <laughs> like, they don't have to pass. That's great. It takes a little bit of weight off of Daniel Jones. To where, like, okay, we could, a third and two, we're not thinking, oh, should we pass it here? Oh, no, we're thinking we should run. Now, we got to take a look at our depth at running back. Currently, Corey Clement, I think it'd be a good option. Five foot ten, 220 pounds. Of, he's uh, going into his fifth year, I believe. 2017 was his rookie year. And I think he, he doesn't really have a lot of tread on his tires. Meaning that he still, I think, has a little bit of go left with him. Then you also have Devontae Booker, who can lead in some spots, I think. We can deal with a, a three-headed monster. Even if, like, if Zegron Barkley's still in there, you have a little bit of change of pace. Zegron Barkley will juke you. I, I think he can also truck you. He can stiff arm you. Uh, then you also may have the uh, six-round pick that we had, Gary Brightwell, who also could run you over. Now, I wish we had a little bit more of that, you know, that force, but the offensive line will be able to run people over, you know, with Shane Lemieux and Nick Gates and the big guys we have up front. So I don't really worry about, like, the power as far as the running backs. Yeah, I think that Saquon Barkley is not really needed. It, it's a really good addition. But the the uh, weapons that we've added, not really on the offensive line, but just the, the offensive weapons that we've added show that we could thrive without a Saquon Barkley. With Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, it's, it, it's pretty good. It's 23 touchdowns, 8 interceptions in 10 games. Without Saquon Barkley, a full season, 16 games, 12 TDs, 14 interceptions. Now, I don't think this is a great sample size because when we have Saquon Barkley, we're versus Washington. We're versus easy teams. And then when Saquon gets shut down, he really just goes for 5, 10 yards. I've rarely seen that. Have you ever seen a normal running back really get shut down for like zero yards before? That's, that's impossible to see. Now, Saquon Barkley wasn't dealing with much. But, you know, if we do get shut down, now that we have a running back two, running back three, we can be like, okay, Saquon, let's pivot. Let's maybe have you out of the backfield a little bit more. Let's not have you running. Let's switch it up and let's be a little bit more versatile. Let's try different things rather than just trying to run you up the middle and the offensive line isn't working. But the idea is this year, we're not going to end up being a Pittsburgh versus Giants where their defensive line now matches our offensive line the entire game. Um, we haven't added much, but, you know, we take a look at Nick Gates is 25 years old. That's the prime of the career. You know, you have Shane Lemieux, probably 22, 23. Andrew Thomas, 22 coming into the season. And then, uh, obviously, Matt Parrott, uh, 22 years old. So it's very young, and they're getting better. And they're getting bigger. 
they're going into their man bodies and they're going to get more chemistry. So we're, I don't think we're going to see a lot of games where we get zero rushing yards, kind of like the Jets game. And then Daniel Jones, he's starting to learn the offense better. So if things are working out, we'd be like, okay, pivot. Let's implement some things that we did in practice. Let's go to plan B and uh, let's do, let's do some other things. Let's get Kadarius Tony involved. Let, you know, and then count that as a run play because you're basically just throwing it to him behind the line of scrimmage. Or let's expand the field a little bit, and then that also helps the run game. You know, that, that helps the run game because, you know, you're not going to have another guy in the box. And we, we've seen that as an issue. We were so bad in the passing game this year that they knew we were going to run. They, they Against the Seahawks, I think there were like nine guys in the box at one point. And we're just like, we're going to run it still. And that game, we were successful, but that's not a recipe for success. You know, uh, good teams, good teams succeed, though when you know what they're going to do and they still succeed. Uh, that, that is a, also a little bit a part of this too. Like, you know Tom Brady is going to dink and duck the entire game. But you also know he's going to throw some deep balls. But you know Aaron Rodgers is going to sit back and just dissect you. You know Lamar Jackson's going to run. You know it. And only two, three teams can really shut that down, either because of the opposing offense or because, you know, they're playing team tackling defense like the Titans, like the Bills, and you just shut down their run game. So... I do think Daniel Jones can succeed without Saquon Barkley. Um, I'm not planning on it. I don't want it to happen. But what Devontae Booker offers, it's a nice RB2. Now, we said the same thing about Deion Lewis last year, but Devontae Booker is younger. Uh, you know, Deion Lewis is like 31. He was unable to pick up blocks. You know, we saw, I think in the Tampa game, he just whiffed on a block and Daniel Jones got lit up. And I think it was a fumble. I think that also happened in the Arizona game. Or I think someone just left unblocked. But, you know, with better coaching, we now have Rob Sale. We have, um, I forgot the other guy's name. But, like, we have a lot of coaching here that you're not going to have somebody free running at Daniel Jones. And that creates a lot of negative plays. If people say that Daniel Jones has no pocket presence, well, if there's a free runner at you on your blind side, and you're not, you're not expecting somebody to attack you within two seconds. Let's just say that. And that's what happened a lot. It wasn't a whole bunch of, you know, the guy got beat around the edge. And it was like, three seconds, Daniel Jones trying to scramble around, he's trying to make a play, and then he throws an interception, although there were some of those. A lot of the plays were just like two seconds, and the, the dude's already on the ground. <laughs> like, and, and towards the end of the season, he's playing on one leg. Now, he does need to stay healthy, and the offensive line is uh, really responsible for that. They're going to need to keep him upright. They're going to need to have a couple quick plays where he's not always stepping back in the pocket and trying to throw. Um, and we, you know, obviously still have a reliable run game. Uh, I still expect Saquon to have a really good season this year. Uh, my expectations, he has to go for at least a thousand yards this season, right? Um, that's a, it feels like a pretty safe bet, especially with 17 games. I just limit him a little bit, especially with 17 games, especially with 17 games. And the fact that we're bringing a lot of running backs in mainly, I think mainly for special teams, but, uh, you know, if we don't need Saquon, if it's the second half and we're winning 30 to nothing, <laughs> You know, it's, it, that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing because we get rest. In a bunch of games, we're like, we're either in it or so far out of it or whatever. And then we're still putting Saquon in there. Like, he's getting hurt. Like, I think there'll be a few games this year, maybe with Denver, or maybe with Washington again, maybe. I don't know. That, or Philadelphia, that's going to be like, okay, let's give Saquon a little bit of rest here. Let's put in some backups. Let's maybe develop a Gary Brightwell and uh, see what they do rather than, you know, putting Saquon in the brunt of it, and that'll make him healthier towards the end of the season and um, help him recover from the ACL. Uh, and it, it, the ACL is a pretty daunting thing. It's um, usually the second year after is where you succeed. You know, Adrian Peterson was able to do it, but people are taking it a little bit lightly. They think, oh, it's ACL from ACL. But, you know, ACL is, uh, you know, <laughs> you're not quite the same after it. I don't care what kind of medicine. It's an injury, you know. And we seen what we saw with Todd Gurley. He had a more of a degenerate knee, but I am still a little bit concerned about Saquon. Um, but he he is doing. I think he's doing all the right things. He wants to come back, and that's uh, a good thing for me. And the team chemistry looks pretty good too. But hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.